Hey, we're outside the office. Dylan and I are about to jump in the car, take a little ride, and I'm gonna walk you through, we're gonna drive to my first office I ever had, the first apartment building I ever door knocked, an old client's house, business area that I used to door knock when I was doing B2B sales, um, SIG's first ever office that we ever had, um, once we went independent, um, mutual office, and then come back here. So I'm gonna take, we're gonna jump in the car, go for a little ride, take you through some different spots that were a part of my career, and then I want you guys to see. So we're, jump, we're jumping in the, uh, the Audi SQ5. Okay, I just got this uh, end of last year, early this year. Well, a fun car, kind of nice, you know. It's gonna definitely beep at There we go. Yeah, it's definitely gonna beep at both of us. This thing loves to, well, I don't put my buckle on. Well, that never happens. I always put my seatbelt on. All right, so I, I wanna walk through, uh, I wanna talk you guys through and show you um, several different spots. Okay, so right now we're at our office here. We're where we office now. Uh, we've got six different suites here, about 8,500 square feet. And I want to show you around the six or seven different spots. It's raining in Missouri today. I want to, well, I want to talk you through six or seven different spots um, because I see a lot of agents commenting. Like I'm getting a ton of agents that are. I would say we get about we get about 1,200 new subscribers to our YouTube channel every month, and a lot of the agents that we get um, are brand new. They're like, hey, I'm getting my license. Like I talked to a few today that joined Success Society that or that jumped on our new CA Cell system, and and they are. Um, just getting licensed, they're new, they don't know what to do, right? They, they don't know how to go make money. Um, or we're getting a lot of, and, or we're getting a lot of agents that are failing, they're quitting, they're struggling, they're not being successful. And so I wanna really walk you guys through and talk you through um, the early days of my career, how I made it, and how I believe that you can make it too, okay? Um, and I wanna be, I wanna be an encouragement and a motivation to those that are struggling or the, to those that are new to show you like, hey, it's it's not always as easy as we think, right? If you think about the fact that 92% of insurance agents fell, uh, that's a big number. That's a huge number, and, and, and why is that? Well, I think the big reason is people just quit, man, you know? In this business, we did a theme recently with 2,500 insurance agents on a virtual conference, and it talked about how if you don't quit, you can't fail, right? So we're only a couple miles away. I'm actually fixing to pull up into the first um, office that I ever had. I actually started in, I started in a cubicle, okay, in, in, a, in a local mutual office, in a cubicle, um, and then ended up getting my own office, you know, after I was out producing everyone else. Uh, and, but if you don't outproduce everybody else, you, still, you deserve to just stay in a cubicle, okay? So, uh, this is the spot, okay? This is literally the spot um, where we had, I don't know how, I don't know how big it was, um, but I had an office, I had a cubicle as an intern, I actually had a cubicle um, right through this door. It was a little break room. If you go through that door and you turn left, I had a little cubicle as an intern literally sitting right in there. Uh, we should just barge in, camera and all, but maybe a little weird. Uh, so not, not only there, I also had another cubicle um, in the back part. So they had a little courtyard and then some other offices and cubes in the back. Literally right through this back area um, was a cubicle area where I was actually, as a brand new insurance agent, 20 years old, I was sitting in a cube right through those windows. And then also when I got my first office, I went out and bought like a $2,300 $2, desk because I didn't have a desk or chairs or nothing. And my office window, um, if you see the little fountain, it's the one just to the right. So it's it's the last one on this wall. And there's two doors that come out, but the ones with the blinds just to the right of the little fountain, just right of the courtyard, was literally the first office that I ever had. And it's the office that um, I, was the, I was in a cubicle and I was in that office when I made $117,361.13 in my first eight months. And I, it was a lot of, like you gotta think too, you gotta remember, I was playing basketball I was going to school full time, 21 credit hours a semester. I would have to, uh, I would have to come back. Literally, I would go sell for several hours after. I'd go to school, then I would go sell for several hours, like cold call and door knock and stuff. Then I would go to a basketball game. After the basketball game, I would have to come back and actually turn in all the apps and fax them in. 
uh, I would be here at like 10, 11 o'clock at nine, 10, 11 o'clock at night all the time because to me, um, I've always been someone that will do whatever it takes no matter what. You know, that's just my philosophy. Um, I hope you're like that because if you're not, you're going to struggle, you know. Um, so that was my first office ever that I was a part of. I also want to take you to a uh, apartment building over here that I door knocked. And I remember door knocked, and most people are going to think this is really weird, you know. I, they're like, I would never door knock an apartment building, you know. Well, I, I didn't know what else to do. I door knocked everything, everyone, um, cold called everything and everyone. Uh, and because I knew if, when you do the math, I knew I had to sit down and ask 10 people to buy every single week. I need 10, 10 people to do business with me, man, right? I need to ask them to do business at least. And to me, when I ran the numbers, I didn't know, like a lot of people, I, str I struggled with the prospecting, the marketing, how do I get in front of people, um, you know, all those kind of things. And, and I just did it old school, the toughest way possible. You know, you always hear about, hear about the old agents that ran debit routes and cold door knocking and all that. That's kind of what I was kind of like my first year, you know? Um, I didn't work leads. It was cold calls, door knocking, warm market, and then I would do those call nights that you guys have heard about where I would invite um, agents over to actually make calls, you know? Uh, and and they would all, we, we would all get together in a huddle in, in the back of the, um, that office and we would set, you know, 8, 12, 16, 20 appointments in two or three hours from straight cold. And that was the office that I started those call nights in um, back in the day, okay? So we're about to go over to a apartment building here that I, I actually, it's a residential apartment building. Um, it's, uh, I don't even know what it's called, um, but I remember selling two final expense policies from cold door knocking after probably about, I probably knocked on 40 doors or something. And then I got into this older lady's uh, home. I think she had her apartment. I think her name was Carolyn, if I'm not mistaken. Could be off. Could have been her sister. Two sisters sat right across. They, they, they lived right across from each other in this little apartment building. And I got into her apartment. And then she ended up bringing me over to her sister. And then we ended up selling both of them um, that day from literally just cold door knocking. And it's kind of funny. as you're, There used to be a no soliciting sign, actually, um, out here by the road. Uh, I don't know if that's still the case, but uh, let's see. Private property, no trespassing. Um, well, I don't see no soliciting. Uh, but I, I used to get kicked out of places all the time, you know. But I was nice. I was respectful. Um, I'm not one to like, you know, break laws. I'm just one to. People need life insurance, man. You know. So, uh, it's, they literally lived in. This part of the apartment, this last piece, B, B, the D building or whatever you want to call it, and they lived in the top. So right there in this window to the right, I don't, I don't, I don't think they still live here anymore, but they still own the policies. They lived up here, right across from each other. So I started off in the one to the right, and then spent some time with her, and then took me over to her sister's in the top left, and then we ended up sitting in the sister's home uh, apartment for a good. I was probably here for like two hours. Like I spent a lot of time here in, in, in that space, but it call, it came totally from cold door knocking. You know, like we get a lot of questions about like, dude, well, what did you say? You know, like I, I would just get excited. Hey, I'm Cody. How are you doing today? You know, well, dude, why are you at my door? You know, again, my name's Cody. I'm, I help a lot of seniors in this area with their burial and final expenses. Um, I like to go over some new information with you. If you got a quick second, you know, can we sit at the couch or the table? And you do that enough. Like you put that freaking sweat equity in and you get just beat down and doors slammed in your face, people cursing you out, um, people saying I'm not interested or you know, you're stupid or whatever, right? It, you know, um, you get that forces you to eventually get really good at sales. And during that time, um, I was not great, but I was going to do whatever it took, you know, no matter what, I'm gonna go back out and then go to an old cl a, a client's house. I actually have a couple clients over here in this area and we're all, we're still really close to the office, by the way. Springfield, Missouri is not huge, 150 to 200,000 people. Um, and I did a lot, of, a lot more selling outside of Springfield than I actually did in the city just because I always liked selling rurally, um, grabbing aged leads, going and door knocking those. Um, in the rural, there seemed to be a little more receptive, nicer, they get hit up less because there's less insurance agents in the rural part than the city. Um, and so I'm really just kind of talking you through, you know, my journey, the, the things that I did to be successful, the things that I know that you can do to be successful. But, but a lot of agents, I was talking to a guy earlier, you know, and he's like, well, you know, I don't know, man. Um, you know, like most people think about stuff, 
Like most people would have said, like you watching right now, maybe you would have said, hey, I'm gonna go to the apartment building and make a sale. Nah, I don't wanna do that. I'll do that tomorrow. I don't wanna door knock. You know, for me, I was, comp- I-, I forced myself to conquer my fears, get out of my comfort zone, get you know, do things I didn't wanna do. And for me, there was never a time where I'm like, I think I should do this and I didn't do it because my, me winning and hitting my goal of earning six figures my first year was more valuable and more important than me not going and knocking on the door, you know? So, so for me, um, that was always just like, if I needed to do it, uh, yeah, I was, I was in my head, right? Like everybody else, I got in my head and now oh, maybe you shouldn't do this, maybe this is tough, whatever, right? Uh, but, but I ended up doing it, you know? I, I, I door knocked this entire residential um, area. I literally, I remember knocking on Powell Street here. I knocked all the doors here at Dunkirk. Um, it's a little neighborhood. I'll slow down so Dylan can pan in. Um, I door knocked all of those. I actually, I remember one of those. Um, I'm going to go back. I remember one of those that I door knocked that was turning 65. No joke. Um, that was turning 65. And I ended up setting an appointment, going back and selling a Medicare policy. I think that may have been my second year though. I didn't sell Medicare my first year at all. Um, but I'm gonna go back. This wasn't on the list, uh, but I'm remembering this as I'm seeing that house. Um, there's just like a lot of memories come back. I start thinking about stories and um, like I'm the one, I've talked my sales manager into buying a whiteboard so that the whole team could like track their activity and all that, you know. Um, just a lot of, just a lot of things, you know, I think about this literally was the one of the houses that I door knocked and dropped off a goodie bag at um, they were turning 65 uh, it was just I don't know um, I don't know if they still live there I don't know if they still make her policy with me I have no idea somebody else manages all that all my book of business and all that now um, but I do remember a client's house that I sold um, he was in his early I think he was late 60s actually and I sold a pretty good size um, 10 year term policy to him my first year. Um, I think his name was Jay and I sold, um, I sold, you know, I sold, uh, probably close, close to a couple hundred clients my first year. And he was actually, a, um, he was someone that actually one of the openers had called and I had to, he, he stood me up my first appointment. And instead of just getting stood up and, and be like, ah, you know, whatever, you know, um, I showed back up and got back in the door uh, because what I learned is with those cold calls, I would have about a 60%, at least a 60% minimum, like like no-show rate. Like that's really high. Like I would book 10, six would stand me up. You know, like that's that's pretty big. That's pretty high, uh, you know, in, in general. Um, which house was this? It may have, no, I don't think it was that one. Um, yeah, it was, it was this one. It was this one. So I literally, um, over here on Walnut Lawn, I don't think they live here anymore. So I literally had it. That, that client that I've been talking about, um, literally lived right here. Um, I still remember like it was yesterday walking through the front door. Um, I don't think like nobody lives there now. Um, I, gosh, there's another one up Battlefield that's close that I, also actually door knocked and got in. I think I sold him like probably five or six policies over the next like several years. Um, children's policies, him, his wife, his brother, uh, like that one's a little farther away. It's a couple miles, so I won't go to it. Um, but I'm just like, I'm thinking about all these memories, you know, and, and it, I talk about like how, when I mention my story and the success and the numbers and stuff, a lot of people think it's Dude, that's you make it seem easy. You sound easy. Like when you break stuff down, you make compl- the complicated simple. Well, that's good, but it was not. It did not really come easy for me. It was. It was. It was. Yeah, I'm a maybe I'm a natural born salesperson, but as far as like getting out and getting in front of people, that's the hardest part of this business. And just like everyone else, I struggled with that exact same thing. You know, like I, I just did, and it's it's the number one reason why insurance agents fail. It's the number one reason that they, they, they struggle to get in front of people consistently every single day, you know. Um, now I'm actually going to take you through a, a, a business area that I door knocked because um, I didn't have a lot. I, I remember one day I was like, hey, I don't have any appointments. I got to do something. And um, 
you know, I'm like, let's try knocking on businesses. Uh, really weird. Um, not my favorite thing to do personally. I'd actually rather knock on houses. I know that's probably strange for a lot of people. Um, but I literally went and door knocked. Um, I'm going to show you over here. Across, it, it's, it's over actually across from the very first secure insurance group office once we went out and opened our own office. Um, so I'll show you both of those really quick little business to business area with a bunch of office suites and stuff. Uh, we're over here on Montclair now. Um, this is a big business area, it continues. I remember talking to a, I actually remember getting an appointment, appointment with a dental office. Um, I think it was to talk to the uh, owner about something, about something. Yeah, so this is the, what's called the Woodhurst Office Park. And I remember walking around in a shirt and tie door knock in like this whole freaking complex this area you know it's there's a lot of there's a lot of businesses here you know i'm sure there's a lot of you know that one's engineering you know there's going to be some lawyers and dentist offices and architects and you know there's another dental clinic right so there, there's uh accounting tax services insurance offices like this is a great place with attorney at law uh inthodontics whatever that is um like this is a huge business area that um, I went and just went door to door. You know, hey, I, I, I help businesses with this. What do you guys do to cover that? You know, and, and I would just get into conversations and, and um, conversations and good things would happen. Also right here where this Jeremiah Me thing is right in front of us, that is where Secures, um, you got a big old uh, semi truck about to pull in front of you. That's literally where Secure Insurance Group's first when I first started, um, after we started our own stuff and started our own office and agency and all that, we officed right here. Um, just a couple miles down the road from where we office now, uh, but we had like, I don't know, 1,500 square feet here, pretty small, um, you know, started out very small. We had a few offices in there, a little receptionist area, you know, uh, but that's where we started, right by this little skybox sky grill and lounge. I'd come over here and eat, eat lunch every now and then. Um, I remember when I was in this office, this was six years ago, six and a half years ago, actually, which is crazy how time flies. Um, six and a half years ago, I, um, I would go out and go and leave town for a few days or a week. And I would drive like four hours away with just a ton of age leads and senior housing facilities and all that. And I would go out and I would knock on about 50 doors a day for five, six days. I remember I would go out and knock on 250, 300 doors. And a lot of times I would come back with 10, 12 policies and applications from just going out and doing it for the week. You know, I'd, I'd be like, dang, I made like eight grand this week, you know? Um, I remember one week, I, I literally, it was like $17,000 because I had a couple big cases in there. Cold, man, just like straight cold. Uh, I always kind of enjoyed that though. I don't know about you guys. Like, let me know in comments below. Like, I, I, I fed off of that somebody not knowing who I was and, and getting them to end up liking me and earning their trust and winning them over and then earning their business. That was a, a game to me. I think it was like an internal game where I'm like, okay, this person knows nothing about me. They are going to buy from me today. And, and, and I, I didn't do callbacks. Like you think about it. I was driving four and a half hours away. I'd go to the boot hill of Missouri. Well, I, they can't call me back. I'm in town for a few days. Like I'm leaving and I'm maybe never coming back to that city or area. That forced me to close deals while I was there. Um, I think that was a benefit too because it forced me to not let people think about stuff and call me back and you know all those things, right? Um, do you struggle with that? If you do, that's the one thing you got to fix. Like that's a confidence thing. That's a certainty thing. That that's a that's a that's a you problem more than it is a them problem. Like most people think, well, that's a, that's a prospect problem, you know. That's a you problem, man. That's a you problem. Uh, it is, and, and, and it's, it's showing that you don't believe in your ability to close the deal right now. Like I, I finally, at some point, believed every person I sit with, if I walk out without business, I did something wrong. I failed at the game. Uh, I remember like I would create these like fictitious goals or like games in my head or like competitive challenges or like, you know, I am going to go knock on 
60 doors today and I'm going to write six policies, you know, something crazy. I would like to just make up these internal games to keep me focused. And, and you need to be, you need to be focused, you know, and a lot of people struggle with that. This was the office that, um, we left when we started doing our own thing. And there was, um, I literally officed right there, just left of those stairs. Um, I had a little office right there, just left of the stairs. I remember during a bit, during like a World Series trip, I would, I put up a little uh, um, activity tracker and I tracked my, um, I tracked my production so that I could win the trip. Like I would, I would really focus on winning trips. Like any, any time they released one, I did, you know. Um, I would bring over kids for call nights here bunch of cubicles you know like all that uh, and that was it man that was the um, that was like that was a bunch of stuff that uh, we literally talked through you know uh, just in general like my first office apartment building clients house businesses you know that I would knock our first office the, the my second office I was ever in was there um, and now you know, now here we are. Uh, we've got. We started out with one suite here. Now we got six. Now we're running out of parking, and we've got you know um, more. We've got like I don't even know. Probably 80 people that office or work or that park here. Uh, we're actually gonna have our sales team park in a different location here pretty soon. Like it's crazy. Um, it's growing. I'm loving it, and. I want, I want this to be motivation to you guys. Whatever you want to accomplish, you can accomplish. I, I was no better than you were when I was 19, 20 years old doing what you're doing right now. I struggled. I, I beat myself up. I hit my head against the wall. Like I, I, My back was against the wall and I had to move forward as The Rock talks about in his speech. Like I, I had to deliver. And, and, and I, but the difference is, the difference between me and a lot of agents out there watching right now, I did whatever it took. If I had to knock on 100 doors, I knocked on 100 doors. Most people are too scared. If you're too scared, if you won't get out of your comfort zone, if you won't conquer your fear, you will quit and you will fail. And I do not want to see that. So hopefully my story and showing you some behind the scenes of things that happened in my life early in my career, hopefully those things will be a motivation to you. They're motivating me to do even bigger and better things now so that next time we do this video in three, five, ten years, uh, we bought the we bought a building and we got 250 employees and, and we're scaling and thinking bigger than we are so hopefully this will uh leave you thinking bigger today appreciate you guys watching hey you love this video and you want some brain food i got five books that every new insurance agent should read go watch that grab the books i'll see you over there when you read a book when you go to an event when you listen to a book when you go to a mastermind, when you buy a university, when you do these different things, okay, when you have a coach, whatever. If you don't have a coach, gosh, darn it. You need